Tonight's first period on Comcast Sports that is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. And by Papa John's. Get 50% off your online order at Papa John's the day after the Flyers win and score three or more. Promo code FLYERS3 at PapaJohns.com. time in the last seven seasons the Vancouver Canucks have paid a visit to Philadelphia Roberto Luongo and the Canucks ready to take on the Flyers here tonight ready to go the Flyers in their home orange jerseys road whites for the Canucks underway as east meets west and the Flyers look for victory number two on this season we'll team it back to get the puck they roll it around for Wayne Simmons who tries to clear but it's knocked down the Flyer combination to stop your screen the fence bears seem to follow Michael Roffel after that puck got it Two setter ice. Braden Shen trying to kick it along, and now for Raffle, but it went off his stick. And yet, I can't sit able to play it back to setter for the Canucks. Surging for that puck is Chris Higgins. Higgins, the former Canadian, briefly a Ranger, played for John Tortorella there in New York. And a few Canucks to have actually experienced John Tortorella as a player. The other one would be Dale Weeks. Canucks battle for the puck. Their combinations at the top of the screen now. Dan Hamuse. Get that puck back to Hansen, and now it's Hamus at the line, just chipping it into the corner. And Kessel looking for it there. He was checked by Simmons, but Hansen gets to the puck. Rolls it back around to the other side. A rotation back by Rockwell to get that puck to Simmons, but he is then checked by Higgins as the Canucks go right to work on the four check. And they get the puck free. Here's Hamus a shot! Save Mason, and he'll hang on. So the first shot of the game belongs to the Canucks. And a nice save by Steve Mason. Let's take a look at our Kia starting goaltenders. Roberto Luongo in goal for the Vancouver Canucks. You can see his record so far through the first five games that he has played in. Save percentage not where he would want it to be. Steve Mason, one and three, but the save percentage outstanding. Ranked seventh in the National Hockey League in that department. He'll try to get a win here against a very talented Vancouver Canucks hockey team. And a Canucks team that plays go after it hockey. They do not sit back. They attack all areas of the ice. Fans in Vancouver really enjoying the style of play, but they're three and three thus far. They've had their ups and downs. They've lost twice to San Jose, and everybody's losing to them, it seems. That shot goes wide. Rick Sadid after the puck, the captain for the Canucks. Sandwiched by two flyers. Got the puck back, but then Chris Tanev's offering a cross ice goes out to the neutral zone. In center ice. Max Talbot able to come away with the puck as he beat Mike Santarelli to it. And now a shot! Save Luongo off of Matt Reed. He couldn't find it. It's still loose. No whistle. It pops free. Here's Sant or a shot. Now in front. I believe that hit post. Grossman with that shot. Or maybe the ref at the side of the net. We'll have to wait and see on that. I think it hit. I think it caught the ref. It just missed the goal post there as Grossman had a little bit of an opening trying to beat Roberto Luongo to the glove side. The first shot from Reed seemed to change direction. That gave Luongo trouble. He never could corral that puck. As the Canucks now clear it out to seven. Strike. Stopping it ahead. Giroux quickly. The time again. Again shot is blocked. And it rolls up into the air. And it's Luongo having to reach and grab that one. So a couple of awkward shots. Heading Luongo's way early in this one. Some tricky ones against Roberto Luongo. There's Matt Reed with a quick shot there. You can see it off the stick of Dan Hamhuse. And good effort by Couturier trying to dig that puck loose. This is a tough one here. He's had two shots. And both of them, this one up high, the first one down low. And that one you can see hit the referee as it just went up and over that left part of the crossbar. Off the draw, shot by Mark Strike goes wide. But the Flyers will keep it in. Now roll it down low to McGinn. McGinn playing again with Jake Voracek and Claude Giroux, but Voracek unable to come up with that puck. And the Canucks get it to center ice. Luke Shen seals off his man, and the Flyers have it. Claude Giroux, one of several Flyer forwards, still looking for that first goal of the season. McGinn across, looking for Voracek, missed him. It bounces 
wide of the net. And so that is icing as we head downstairs inside the glass for the one and only Steve Coates. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Jackson. And let's talk a little bit about new coach of the Vancouver Canucks, John Tortorella, comes over, of course, to the New York Rangers, number one among American coaches in wins. He's got 800 games coach 300 wins and on top of that he's won a stanley cup with the tampa bay lightning he's obviously accomplished a heck of an awful lot and as you had mentioned his teams want to go they're going to go 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 he demands a hard-working hockey club a lot of the talk of the offseason was he was going to demand even the sedin twins to block shots as the flyers get to this puck and move it ahead here's time again through uh, six games the two brothers have combined for two blocks but yeah i don't are. think that's going to change <laughs> but they are playing his system which is Go, 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 and they're getting a lot of ice time. He likes to rely heavily on his front line play. Yeah, and Henrik was saying it's taken a little while to adjust. He's kind of had some flashback moments to Elaine Vigneault's style where he's caught himself and said, that's not the way we're playing here now. So there is an adjustment period with the way that John Tortorella coaches. Plus, they both had a couple, 21 minutes each. They've been averaging 21 minutes. That's two more than last year under Vigneault. Well, the adjustments there, and you wonder about a wear down effect in the course of a game for some of the older players with this Vancouver team. Gustafson takes a big hit there, but protected the puck well, and the Flyers move up. Here's Jay Rosehill. Rosehill will wind it into the Vancouver zone. First to it is Adam Hall. Hall takes a hit, rolls it behind the net. Rosehill got his stick on it, but the Canucks come away with it. And now David Duke with a pass. And it's pushed into the Philadelphia zone. By Ryan Stamp. Remember Blackhawk is from over on waivers before the season started. And Weber, the former Canadian, shot is blocked. And Rosehill with the block. He fanned on his pass, but got the puck out to center. Canucks have been physical early. The pass through center is cut off, but got right back by the Canucks. As we played over four minutes. Glad you could join us on Comcast Sportsnet. The Flyers and Canucks. This the two games this week here at home for the Flyers. The Penguins are here on Thursday. And then a week off for the Flyers. Here's Braden Shen moving up. The shot. Save Luongo. The rebound. And Simmons gets to it. Simmons firing it through off of Luongo's stick. It goes back to the point. Luke Shen is there and he'll tuck it in along the wall. Raffle. Shen there, but coming away with it to Canucks. But Simmons then knocks it down. Centering pass by Raffle. Braden Shen was checked. Couldn't do anything with that. Now Shen looking for Simmons, but it was out of his reach. And the Canucks will turn it back the other way. Dale Weiss. Rolls that into the Philadelphia zone. Flyers have three of the game's first four shots. Look to move up here. Strike banking that one ahead. Voracek catches up to it. Jake Voracek to time again. He'll wind. He'll fire in the save made by Luongo. Again to Voracek. Now Giroux takes a look. Sends it in front. Again went to the net. And it was fought off in front. Stick goes flying and the Canucks move up. Hanson trying to catch up to that, will not be able to. It'll be Timo Tiedemann instead. Nice pass, goes back to the point instead, and that shot deflected and went off the glass. Canucks retrieve quickly and go to work offensively, but that centery pass tipped away. It's Tanev at the point, will roll it back in around. Behind the net, they'll try to make a play. Daniel, dropping it back off to Hanson. Now Daniel sitting with room, and it toward the slot, look for a cutting. Defenseman Tanev, but the Flyers had that covered and clear of the zone. And now it's cut right back into the zone. There is Daniel Sedin. Cuts. His brother arrives to try to help him out. They shuttle it along, and there's Nick Roseman. And cross ice, that pass up the middle, and Max Talbot darts out to center ice with speed. Talbot up the right wing, takes a look in front of that stick, comes back into play and blocks his pass. And now the Canucks go back the other way with it. Daniel Sedin. Lobs it in, but it goes over the glass and out of play. No score early here in Philadelphia. Mercy University notes. And it's the time of the week, beginning of the week. Three stars of the week for the NHL. All great choices. We start at the top. Tomas Hurdle had a four-goal game, finished it off with that goal. He's a good first start. Yeah, league. picked up another goal to make it five for the week. Outstanding start to his National Hockey League career. And goaltending has been the story for the Colorado Avalanche. J.S. Shagir picked up a shutout against the Boston Bruins in Boston. And Varlamov has been virtually unbeatable. And Sidney Crosby doing his thing. Had a hat trick, part of seven points in three games. Has an assist already tonight in the Penguins game against Edmonton. And, yes, he will be in town on Thursday. And I'm sure he'll get 
of Philadelphia. Welcome. As uh, we go downstairs to coach, a little news on the linesman. Coach. Well, Greg Dvorsky uh, said he has a little bit of problems with his neck. He talked to Pierre Rassico a little bit about it and said, I'm going to go down and get checked out. So obviously it's bad enough for him to leave the game. So Rassico will do the lines. And he'll, he'll help, have a little help from the two referees. All right, so we have two referees, one linesman right now. Is that shot from the point? The X is drifted off of Mason. We didn't see it, I don't think, until the last moment. Real good pace to this game so far. Almost seven minutes in, no score. Battle going on here. Roseman trying to tip that buck away from Hedrick Sedin. He stays with it. Roseman looking for Colbert, but it's tipped back instead to Jason Garrison. His shot deflected out of play. Take a look at our virtual scratches from the lineups. Of Andrew Alberts, the former flyer, is a healthy scratch. Alexander Edler serving a three-game suspension, game two of it for his hit on Hurdle. And as you look at the Flyers, of course, Hartnell and LeCavier out. Hartnell two to four weeks with that upper body injury. The other three are healthy scratch. And Nicholas Grossman makes big contact on Mike Santorelli, who's been one of the better Vancouver Canucks forwards. Already four goals on the season, and it's a good way to eliminate him down in your own zone by knocking him off the puck. Nice job by Grossman. Out of the right of Mason. Canucks win it. Samuel's shot is deflected. Shen moves it up the wall. Braden Shen is tied up. Amius couldn't get his first try through. Second try just played it to the corner. That's butt back up and shot by Hansen and the save by Mason, but a hand pass was spotted first, and so a face off back in the neutral zone. Well, get ready, folks. The Flyers take on cross state rivals, the Pittsburgh Penguins, this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Never disappointing to no. watch those two clubs go at it. There's still time to get a great seat to the game. Call now to secure your tickets. Penguins playing well early on. And Ruby will have his team ready for that one. I really want to have two good games here because then they have a week off. And obviously there'll be a lot of practice time in there, but you don't want to you don't want to be one in seven or you don't want to be coming off of bad performances when you have that much time between games. Clearly. And uh, you have to like their forecheck early in this game. They've got some jump. They've got some hop in their step. They showed signs of that against Detroit. Here's Matt Reed getting in on it. There's Adam Hall on the dump in. A good job keeping that puck along the wall. Shots to the net. McGinn fires that one. Forecheck and Giroux are quick to get to it. And then McGinn heads to the net for the rebound chance. Really noticing that about time again. He knows his role on that line. This goes right to the net. Seven shots. Five of them belong to the Flyers here through the first six and a half minutes. Three to seven and Time flies. Santorelli turning with a puck for Vancouver. To Edward Sedin. Now Daniel in front looking for Santorelli. I get that shot off. Santorelli, you may remember, is a Florida Panther. He also played for that with Nashville. And last year, Link was uh, moved as well to Winnipeg. Didn't go well there for him. Signed with the Canucks, and he has four goals, including two overtime game winners. So he's paid some early dividends for the Canucks. This time again, jamming that puck along. Harrison will roll it back around behind the net. The X up the wall. Reading that is teaming it. Teaming it back to begin for a shot that hit a sticker leg and bounced to the corner. Giroux getting it to Voracek, racing to the other side, backs it back to Giroux, shot, hit the post, rebound again, he stuffed it wide. Oh, so close. Claude Giroux looking for that first goal of the year, so close, and then again right there again in a good spot, but his attempt went wide. Love the aggressiveness of Voracek there on that wraparound attempt. Just get the net and try to get it towards the feet of Luongo. Giroux just missed. Way off the icing properly there. Now, Ronaldo after for the Flyers, Adam Hall to it. Got it back to Luke Shen. He'll play it in along the wall. Ronaldo, Ryan Stanton battling. Ronaldo set it off the outside of the net. And good discipline there by Zach. He's going to put that stick in there to try to knock that puck away. Probably would have been a penalty, and he pulled it right out of there, and no call made. Yannick Weber dumped it center. A nice clean legal hit by Ronaldo, and then a nice hit by Luke Shen as well, as he was able to get a piece of David Booth. And now the gloves are down. Zach Cassian and Luke Shen training. Left from Luke Shen, Cassian down. Now he goes back up and connects with the left. Shen goes down, but they both pop back up. Now Cassian's helmet is off. So they twist and turn. Linesmen are thinking it's over. And of course, only one linesman there, so the other referee just let a bear jumps in and they break up the fight. And the fans sort of like that here in Philadelphia. 
the fight. I mean, yes. Not and breaking it the up. The energy in the building, right? It starts with the hit by Zach Ronaldo right across from Coetzee. As you can see, the contact there. Good body check by Ronaldo, and then the fight follows shortly after that. This was a dandy, too, because they're just going to grab on old-fashioned cool. right there. They just grab on to the neck of each other's sweaters and then just swing with the left hands. And then they both fall. They both still get up. Look at Shen. actually got a good one in on the way up. Let's take a look at this opportunity by Jake Borchek. We talk about the Nets being smaller. We're seeing a lot more wraparounds. Look at Borchek right there as he's got an opportunity. And it was true as he's going to hit the pipe on his opportunity. But he gets it to Borchek and then goes to the net. I like the way he took Santarelli down in the corner and was able to get body position to the net to get that chance. Five each for fighting on Shen and Cassian, so it remains five aside hockey. Sestito, the former flyer, dumping that puck out of the zone. Jake Voracek races back to get to it, stretch pass from McGinn. He tipped it but couldn't control it. Can't have the defenseman worked out by McGinn. Still, now McGinn. It's that puck in his skates. It's pushed away from him. Back to the point. Postman is there. He'll take the shot. And that one went wide. Perhaps even off of Voracek. Over rolls it around. Reach again. Jabbing it free. Back to Grossman for the shot. Save Luongo through the screen of his defenseman, Hamuse. And that play set up again. A good play by McGinn as he kept the puck alive along the board. Well, the good news is you're getting shots on net, okay? You've got six so far in this one. But the Flyers right now are 20th in the NHL in shots on net. This kind of shows this number here. Vortek, Couturier, Giroux, Simmons, Hartnell, Reed, all looking for their first goals. That is not good. That is not good at all because you got to score goals to win hockey games. And when your premier goal scores, the guys you expect to score goals aren't scoring, you get off the starts like they are right now. But I will say this, Coach, to the last two games, over 70 shots, and now, as you see, they're already six through the first half yes. of the first period here. you got to get the shots before you get the goals, and early on in the year, I don't think they were, I don't think they were even getting that many chances. They right were. Yeah. They're skating better. The passes have been crisper so far. Offside call there. So we'll step aside. Still no score here. Flyers and Canucks. Flyers and Canucks. Good hockey game early, but another battle going on, of course, as uh, this is Cancer Awareness Night here at Wells Fargo Center. Steve Mason has the lavender strip in his tape. Youngster that battling cancer was able to greet the team as they went out on the ice for the pregame skate. Some of the other players also have uh, some other equipment that's got the lavender. You got the Hockey Fights Cancer patch in the helmet. We're all wearing our lavender ties. All fans in attendance receiving uh, Rally towel and the support of Hockey Fights Cancer. Great initiative by the NHL, raised a lot of money. Obviously a great cause and great to be part of it here tonight. Grossman moving that one ahead. And now the Canucks control, Yedek Weber firing it all the way down. Grossman back and it's Dean right on him. Grossman has to reset himself and he moves it to the other side of the ice and the Flyers move up with speed. Here's Couturier. Left wing feed for Talbot. Talbot will push it along for Couturier. Now it's knocked down by Reed. Back to Couturier for a shot. Save made by Luongo. Now Reed digging it free. He'll stuff it back to the other side of the ice. Team in a quick shot. Snared by the big glove of Luongo, and he'll squeeze it. The Flyers firing a lot of rubber. Luongo's way. Get Philly sports news and scores when you're on the go. Be the first to know the latest on all of your Philly teams right from your smartphone. Download the free CSN Philly Sports app now. Steve Mason has seen but two shots, none from Vancouver forwards. That's not easy. The Flyers doing a heck of a job against some highly skilled Vancouver Canuck forwards, and so far they've been in their face. Even though Vancouver has had some offensive zone time on cycles, the Flyers have done a very good job of keeping them to the outside. Booth got that puck ahead to Yannick Hansen. He was able to backhand in. Now the Flyers look to start up. Here is Strike for Simmons. Gaining the line, giving some room. He'll take the shot high and wide. Bounces into the corner. And it's moved ahead. Weeks trying to catch up to that, but instead it's Strike. For Grossman ahead. 
And now Raffle will fire that across ice, bounces high in the air. Gathered eventually by Braden Shen. He was swarmed upon by the Canucks. And they'll move it out to the red line. Boston retreating with it. Nine Simmons. Simmons for Shen. Shen to Raffle, and it's tipped away. Diving play made by Jordan Schroeder, who's into his first game this year for the Canucks. And back from foot injury. That puck side of the net. Flyers able to get to it. Coming back around by Voracek to Braden Shen. Braden Shen pass, looking for him again, but just a little too far out in front of him and cleared to center. Right back in go the Flyers. It's Grossman. Takes a look. Finds fire. Save. Rebound again. He scores! Again! A rebound, a backhand, and a goal for time again. He scores for a case of Casey Gates. one nothing Flyers. Little deja vu, isn't it? That's how he picked up his first goal of the season in his first game against Detroit. Rebound, going to the net hard, and shows some good skill with the backhand. Yet again, there's the Luongo kick pad save right to the tape of McGinn. We'll take a look at the last game, and you'll say, wow, that looks like the same play. The only thing is it's from the opposite side. What is in common, he's outside the net. That's where you have that rebound. He gets to be able to look right there. He's off the post. He's got all that net to work with, and Luongo can't get back in time. But give Grossman some opportunity, or actually some accolades for that. Getting that shot on net and making it tough for Luongo to handle it. Grossman and Gustafson will get the assist and a turnover and a goal as Kessler pops it into the empty net. Mason got caught out, and Kessler ties it at one. Before the crowd had even sat now just 10 seconds after the Flyers had taken the lead. Right off the stanchion and right out front. Mason went behind the goal to play it and got a really unfortunate bounce. Ryan Kessler has the tap in in the empty net. It's the first shot by a Vancouver Canuck forward and it won't get any easier than that. Boy, that's a hard thing to be able to control. You just have no, the goaltender is waiting for that puck to come around the dasher. It just didn't work out like that. Comes right out. There's just no defense to that. That's a hard, hard play. Well, the Canucks probably feel they had something coming to them. They had an own goal in their last game. I'm sure we'll have a chance to show it to you at some point tonight. Although that was more they played it into their own net, but still it took a couple of strange hops for it to get there. This one, pure bad luck for the Flyers. Nothing that Steve Mason could do. He's an aggressive goaltender when it comes to playing the puck. Helps his team a lot in that regard. And Puck doesn't come back true, you're gonna get burned sometimes. And he's just gotta shake it off and get back in there and make his next save. Never easy when you're trying to find ways to win hockey games, especially at the start of the season, and the Vancouver Canucks get a real good bounce there that Ryan Kessler puts to the back of the net. Yeah, once almost to fly, right? Ryan Kessler yep. signed that offer sheet. Seems Austin like Clark yesterday. Still the general manager back then. Seems like yesterday, doesn't it, Jimmy? Well, the funny thing is, Kessler was just beginning, really, his career. And at the time, most of the NHL said, what are the Flyers, crazy? Well, they knew. They knew he was going to be a great player. That shot batted out of there by Mason, but gotten back by the Canucks. Behind the net, Daniel Sedin trying to fight off Grossman. In fact, he just pops to the ice, and Grossman's going to get a penalty. I know this is just a battle for a puck, and Sedin decided he was going to drop, and... So Grossman ends up going to the box. Philadelphia number eight, minor penalty hooking. So the first power play of the game belongs to Vancouver, and this is something the Flyers want to avoid being shorthanded a lot in yeah. this game. And here's the hook right there into the midsection. That stick is parallel to the ice, and they're going to call that every time they get the chance. Yeah, the arm didn't go up, though, until he fell down. Right. And that was Sidney realizing, hey, the stick's here. I better make the referee understand. And he did. And, you know, that's a good play. Gets his team a power play. And Vancouver power play has struggled. Just 10.5%. Two for 19. And they haven't scored in their last four games in the power play. 0 for 7. But where have I heard this story before? Right. Detroit had been 0 for, 0 for 10 on the year until they played the Flyers. A ton of talent on that power play. They scored three times. This is a power play that can be lethal. Look at the personnel. Look who's out there right now. Sedin, Twins, Kessler, and then Jason Garrison, number five, who's about to get the puck here. He can absolutely blast the puck. Oh, he's got the big shot. We remember him from the Florida Panthers, and because of the lockout, we didn't get to see him. But, boy, he can bring it. And Hamuse will try to direct traffic from the other point. So it is 
Potentially a very good power play is Daniel, to Hamus, now Garrison. And Kessler quickly around. They move the puck very aggressively back to Hamus, and now Daniel, the shot that's blocked off by Gustafson. Kessler centers, tipped away at the last moment by Reed from Garrison. He couldn't get a clean shot off. Now Couturier reaching for it, but it's Kessler instead to Henry. And now Kessler right back to Henrik Sedin. Back to Hamus for a shot that goes wide of traffic. Chance for Reed here. He's going to try the other side. Now he's just going to try to eat the puck because he realized there was nowhere to go with it. Canucks get it away from him. Back to Garrison. There's that shot. And it's denied as Kessler looked for the deflection in front. To the other side, Couturier over a chance to clear here. And he will get it all the way down. Good decision by Couturier not to try to move that puck on his backhand. Waited for it. Got it to the forehand. And a much easier shot down the ice. The Exa now out for the Canucks. Across, and Jordan Shorter will send it in. Mark Strike trying to protect the puck, fires it up the glass, and he got it past. Got a quiver and down the ice. And that will just about take care of the Grossman penalty. Five seconds remaining on it as the Cucks try one last stretch pass. They miss on it. They're saying he touched that puck. Maybe it would have been icing, or maybe he had the lead going in. It was a hybrid call. That's going to be even more difficult with one line's been here, that hybrid icing. Good and point. Dvorsky has still not returned. Coach reporting earlier, a neck issue, and had to go get it checked out. So, Vierasico, the only line's been right now. Back to the point, Weber's shot deflected in the air, batted by Talbot to the boards. Guys are back to full strength, trying to get their bearings. Grossman does that as he gets the puck and sends it into the Vancouver zone. And Grossman quickly hustles off to get a flyer forward on the ice. He had just exited the penalty box. Good alert play by him to get the red line and get off the X. 3.50 remaining in this first period. 1-1 one, one the score. A couple goals separated by just 10 seconds. Flipped in. Brad Richardson flyers go and get it. Gustafson ahead. Ethan Shen will catch up to it. And now he'll just punch it deep into the Vancouver zone and chase himself with Tanev. Stanton is checked. Flyers get to the puck. Ivan Edgar Simmons. Wayne Simmons trying to get away from Tanev. Gets to Braden Shen. Shen trying to set her, but that was tipped away by Weiss and down the ice. Flyers have been hungry on the forecheck in this game. They've caused some turnovers by the Canucks. Raffle. Raffle looking for it. Got it back for Grossman. He's in his skates. He did what he could just to keep it in the zone. And now Santorelli will move it ahead. Backhanded in by Sestito. Mason will play it up the wall for Giroux. And now Giroux hoisting one out to center. Grabbed it put down by Garrison. Rolled back in. Not a lot of whistles here. Mason will play that puck ahead. Giroux tips the board check. Or a check ridden down. Crowd wants a penalty. They won't get it. Here's Kessel going the other way. Kessel with a shot. That's gloved by Mason, and he will hang right on to it. Sestito is involved in some pushing and shoving. Time again gave the Flyers the lead. It lasted 10 seconds. Kessler got a fortuitous bounce. It's hot at it one. Tied up at 1 1 here. Time again has a lot to do with that. A very strong start for this game. Picked up a goal against Detroit in his first game in the lineup a couple of days ago. He's been good on the forecheck. He's been physical on the body. He's had some good effort plays, getting pucks back to the point, and he's done a good job driving the net for goals. He picks up that one on the backhand and gets the Flyers' first goal, the opening goal of this game. Playing with skilled players. You're a big guy. Go to the net, right? Yeah, his brother Jamie's doing a nice job with the Colorado Avalanche, too, and big part of their 5-0 start. They both scored Saturday night, right? That's right. Ty takes a seat here, face off. Coming up to the left of Steve Mason. Fires about shot, Vancouver 9-6. Couturier settles in. Header City. The Ducks come away with it, Santarelli. Deeper into the corner. Fires good work there. Knock the puck away. Talbot will flutter it into the Vancouver zone. And Reed gets in after the exit. And Reed played so well, even though he doesn't have a point yet. He gets knocked down late by the exit. Gets right back up and is after the puck again. 
Henrik Sedin. Bothered by Reed. Couturier comes in, setters. Out it goes to Grossman. He'll go cross ice. The shot, Coburn. And he deflected and went wide. Back out Grossman, a wrister off the outside of the net. And now Garrison finds it. Overskates momentarily, but is able to play it down the ice. They're going to rule this icing. Well, Penn State and Vermont are set for a rematch at Division I Hockey Programs at the Wells Fargo Center next Saturday, October the 26th. It's a 5 o'clock start. Tickets start at just $10 and are available online at TomCastTicks.com. Some great college hockey, and that is just around the corner. Awesome. Footage of the opener for Penn State in their new arena last Friday. Went over on Building looked full, and it looked great. Congratulations to our program. Of course, the Pagula ice setter. Yep. Owner of the Buffalo Sabres. Donated the money to get that building started. And uh, it's going to be fun as they play in that Big Ten hockey conference. Well, here's our Jeep trivia question of the game. The Flyers and Canucks, well, it's been a while. They met over two years ago, October the 12th, 2011. Who scored the game winning goal in that game? There are your three choices. Zaros, Giroux, or Vorge. High scoring game, if I remember correctly. It was. 5 4. Eight Canucks who played that night, nine Flyers who played tonight. Wow. The rest in that game. So roughly half of the teams left. What a turnover from just two years ago, yeah. That puck goes out of play. And that's the year the Canucks went to the Stanley Cup Finals then, right? Is it slow losing to the Boston Bruins? Yes, two years ago. Yeah. Right? yeah. No, that was the year the Kings. Oh, was it? Okay. That's right. Yeah, three years ago. They were fresh from the Stanley Cup. That's five. right. That was one of their first games of the year. Third or fourth game of the year, October the 12th. Time flies, don't you? Haven't been quite the same since that run. No, they have not, especially in the playoffs. Since they were ahead in that, the finals, 2 up. I believe they're 2 and 12 in the playoffs. Yes, that's right. They swept last year by the. San Jose Sharks. They've beaten them twice already this year. Beat them nine times in a row overall. There's a shot that changes direction and goes wide. Yannick Hansen gets to McCarron. Hansen back out to Tanev. They're able to keep it in. Ross Ice, Ryan Stanton will roll it deep into the Philadelphia zone. Hansen and Tiemann didn't come together. With support from Kessler. He'll flip one wide. And Bieksa gets to it. That's a, put a lot of money into the defense core. Bieksa part of that. The flyer's clear here, but this will be icing. And uh, they're missing, as uh, we mentioned earlier, Alexander Edler because of suspension. It's Craig Berube looks on. That's a big loss. For it is. If you're Craig Berube, you're happy. He's not in the mix for the Vancouver Canucks. Garrison's done a nice job, as Coach he talked about, blasting away point shots. But Edler has a complete game. The physicality, the heads-up plays in the neutral zone, and the offense to go with him. Suspended three times now in the last calendar year. There's a shot that bounces to Daniel Sedin, and his shot was blocked. You know, Timonen got in the way. Had to clear the zone, but could not. Here's Santarelli. Santarelli twisting and turning with it. 18 seconds to go in the period. Santarelli wrist shot right into the red basket of Mason, and no further play. Pretty confident hockey player there in Santarelli, who's had the opportunity to play with both Daniel and Henrik Sedin. Well, there are the numbers. Henrik's numbers are amazing. Daniel's pretty darn close, but the second and third all-time points in this franchise. And when you think about Henrik City, he just plays every game. 636 consecutive games now. Second longest active streak, sixth longest all-time. As the Flyers get an offensive zone draw here with seven seconds to go in the period. Yeah, face-offs have not been friendly to the Flyers in this first period as Vancouver has dominated in that department. They'll try to win a key draw here as Daniel looks on from the Vancouver Canucks bench, and there's Henrik also on the bench, and that's where you want him if you're the Flyers. <laughs> exactly. Keep him right there. Henrik has 15 points in 11 career games against the Flyers. It's his highest points per game against any team in the NHL. The Flyers will try to get something Working here with seven seconds to go. Giroux was directing traffic, but now it's going to be Braden Shen taking the draw. Got it back to Timonen. Timonen into the middle of the shot. Strike went wide. He got a lot on it, but missed the target. 
And time will run out in the first period with the puck in the corner. Solid period for the Flyers. They ran out of a, a little steam after the goal against. The time again got them their goal. Kessler retaliated off a bad bounce if you're a Flyers fan. Ten seconds later, it's 1-1 after 20 minutes. Tonight's Flyers Canucks first period is brought to you by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Power Back Rehabilitation. Two games, two goals for one time again. He's downstairs with Coatsy. Well, Ty, two goals, two games since you got called up. And obviously it doesn't hurt when you find out that you're playing with guys like Giroux and Voracek. But at the same time, is that a little nerve-wracking, a little, you know, uh, nervous for you to have to play with those guys because there's so much expected? I don't know. They're, they're easy players to play with. So uh, it makes it really easy. You've got to just drive the net, get your stick down on the ice and good things happen. You talk about driving to the net. I mean, two goals that I mentioned about both. The same type of goal. Describe what happened tonight. tonight. Oh, I just saw the, uh, a good slap shot coming from the far side and you know, I just drove the net hard. And then I uh, saw the puck just laying there both times. So I just tried to get it off as quick as I could and uh, it went good. Off. You consider yourself having a good backhand? Uh, I don't know about that, but uh, you know, I just try to get good wood on it if it's sitting right there and uh, happen to go in. Well, I'm going to tell everybody you got a good backhand because two and two games is enough for me. Thanks very much. Thanks, Coatsy. All right, Coatsy, thank you very much. Yeah. Time begins backhander looks just fine. Thank you. John Bork, Bill Clement will talk about that backhander. Well, as much more as our coverage of Flyers hockey continues after this. Wells Fargo Center is brought to you by Local Delaware Valley Audi dealers and legendary Audi Quattro all-wheel drive, the world's top-selling luxury all-wheel drive system. And by GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. in the books our sugar house casino numbers jonesy you look at that yeah Let's well see. played first period wasn't it flyers get the jump on vancouver early got a bad bounce against them vancouver gets it evened up but it hits pretty much even if you look at the first period scoring sc summary time again picks up his second of the season and by kessler also gets his second goal of the season for vancouver 10 seconds later our gnc NHL update, 24 teams, busiest night of the young season in the NHL. One of those games has the Pittsburgh Penguins and Edmonton Oilers playing in Pittsburgh. Pascal Dupuis gets that nice feed from Sidney Crosby and makes it 1-0 Penguins. That's the only goal of the game thus far. It remains 1-0 as they get ready to start the second period. Crosby with that assist now leading the NHL in points. And, of course, Sid will be here on he Thursday will. night. And Flyer fans will be looking forward to that. Yeah, have a possible delay here, Coach. It looks a little dark to the left of our location yes, here. If you could take a look at Steve Mason, it appears there's a little darkness from the top of the circles in, actually from the blue line. When you take a look at to our left to the Vancouver zone, you'll see that's a normal lighting situation. So somewhere up here we've got a light problem, and yeah. hopefully we'll get this it taken is, care of up there. It looks like to my right. Getting beyond bizarre because... Last night in Buffalo, they had an outage that uh, led to a delay of, what, 10 minutes or so. And then in the baseball game today, one of the playoff games in Detroit, the ALCS, the lights went out. This is strange. There is a television program about the lights going out all over the place. The Revolution, Revolution or something yeah. like that. There they are. Hopefully They're all back. Ours are back. Oh, there you go. On we have cue. it back. We have it back. Right there. Good work, said Kutzi. That's it. Good work, Coach. No, I was up here to your right. You got that taken care of in a hurry. <laughs> well. So the second period gets underway without any kind of serious delay. 1-1 hockey game. Flyers move the puck ahead. Arafo gets the puck into the Vancouver zone. Longo turns it over behind the net. As Braden Shen is there, but it's jammed away from him by the X. And they scramble.
scramble for it. Finally pushed ahead by Ryan Kessler. Kessler finally healthy again. And if he's healthy in February, one would think he will be part of the U.S. team in Sochi. No question about it. One of the more difficult players in the league to play against and also can chip in and score goals like the one he's got tonight. Some who felt when he was healthy two, three years ago, he was the best all-around forward in the NHL. Maybe this side of Pavel Datsuk, because that puck goes into the safety net. As good and as important as the Sedin twins are to the Vancouver Canucks, they don't get to the Stanley Cup final without this guy. Uh, Ryan Kessler, just an outstanding, in-your-face type player. He was out of his mind in round number two that year against the Nashville Predators. Some of the best hockey I've seen from an individual in the playoffs came from that guy. Very hard to knock off the puck. When you see him down here, he's thick. He's, he's heavy on his skates. Selkie Trophy back in 2011. Here is Max Talbot. And that puck to Matt Reed. Was hoping to tip it to Couturier, but with the signals crossed, and the Canucks come away with the puck. Lob one out to the neutral zone. Jabbed away. Couturier got it ahead. And now Talbot shovels it deep into the Vancouver zone. He'll chase. Yannick Weber. Couturier there, but has two Canucks to deal with. Reed evens things up. Couturier pushes the puck along, and then it's Weber who Got the puck out of there, got it to Hansen, but Couturier ties him up. He's from, again, now it's Reed, takes it free, but falls down. Finally, got the puck to work, Couturier tipped away from strike, and now out in center ice, the Canucks will move up with it. Here's Hansen to the backhand, cutting on in! Save, Mason puck sitting right next to him, and then finally taken behind the net. And the Flyers will move up. What a bizarre play that was. Flyers seemed like they were about to maneuver it toward the Vancouver net, and all of a sudden it was going in the other direction, and Hansen, Good, strong power move to the net. Yeah, and Steve Mason came up with a big save. Mark Strike gave him some help as that puck was laying underneath him, but Hansen, some good acceleration there going around. Braden Colburn tries to jam it in, but the foot of Mason is there, and the Strike helps him underneath. Boy, players always love to be able to cut in on their backhand, and Hansen takes full advantage. Then he wants to come back to the forehand, but Mason, you see what Mason did? He just threw his pads and his body right across the goal crease to make a great save on that forehand opportunity. And you can still see the puck sitting on the other side of the net. Chance is relatively even here early in the second. Flyers will move it ahead. Just pass to Voracek, up the right wing with it. Voracek centering, it's an area. Oh, they score! Time again, again! Make it three goals in two again it's 2-1 Philadelphia Don Tortorella is not happy the Flyers score for a case of tasty cake the passing's been outstanding for Craig Berube and his hockey club in this game from one end to the other and watch the puck movement here on the breakup McGinn starts it there after getting the feed from straight Voracek uses his speed wide and McGinn goes right to the net gets a bounce off Giroux I think and McGinn puts it in the goal and look at the position once again by McGinn he's on the outside of the post that gives him more net to work with. If he's in the middle of the net, Luongo's got a crack at it. But I kidded about it with the back end. Well, guess what? He's got a forehand, too. There it was, Coach. <laughs> From about three feet out yeah, into the net. I'll tell you that. That's the best three-foot forehand I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Look good from here. So the Flyers with a 2-1 lead. McGinn has his first two-goal game. And now 20 National Hockey League contests. It also has himself six goals in 20 NHL games. Here's a shot off the drop pass. And Jordan Schroeder unable to hit the net. The Canucks trying to come right back again. Schroeder sent it off the outside of the gate. Braden Shen will move it to Simmons. And he will try to get it past Garrison. Got some help from Ronaldo out to the neutral zone. Canucks playing right back in. Mason is steering to the other side of the ice. Ronaldo gets back there. It off for team and in and now Gustafson. Gustafson, you get away from Dale Weiss. Team and in, team and in Ronaldo, but he was checked. Now Brad Richardson uh, behind the net, it'll skip to the other side of the ice. Estito charges over after it, got it to Weiss, back to the point shot. Hanson went wide, or that Stanton with that shot, and it went wide. All the way around now, they track it down again as the Canucks have the Flyers pinned in. And trying to set her that one off of a flyer out to the neutral zone. And Richardson back to get it. Now move to set her off the stick of Strike. Santorelli couldn't gather, and Strike has it back. Out around to set her. Stanton 
Punches it back to Philadelphia. It's Voracek has it. He wheels back and now starts up around one. And then the pass to the middle makes its way through to Giroux. Giroux with a shot. Locked off by Stanton. Back to Giroux. But he was checked. And Hedrick Sedin able to maneuver it ahead. It was brother Daniel. And now in the middle, Santarelli. Off on the right wing. The shot save made by Mason. And the exit. Boy, the defenseman for the Canucks certainly like to join the rush. It again is is Henderson in front and Mason the save off of Santarelli is might have gone off of him in on goal and Mason held his ground. Now it's Tanev back checked by Giroux. Right back up. And he's got it to the point. Kept in Coburn. And finally, Henry's had a chance to get it. Couldn't control and now it's worked ahead by Henry. And he will send one in. It's gloved by Mason and he will keep it in play. Gives to Grossman. Grossman wheels it away from one for Checker. And Adam Hall maneuvers the puck ahead to Jay Rosehill. Rosehill for Ronaldo, and that shot just wide. The other side. That's a nice pass there to Kessler. Kessler moving up, the drop pass. And now the shot, love, save made by Mason off of Bieksa. As Hall will lob that one out the other way. Ronaldo trying to catch up to it. Ian Garrison come together. Garrison bats the puck to Kessler, and Kessler's pass off the skate into the neutral zone. Back across ice it goes. Tiemann has to go off his boot. Now he'll ride Kessler to the corner boards. Kessler so got it back, but Garrison could not keep it in the zone. Cross ice for Biaxa. He'll turn it over to Luke Shen. Luke Shen up on the play. Moves in, winds and fires. Save made. Longo, he's going to cover up. Couple of nice saves by Steve Mason as the Vancouver Canucks try to get things tied up. Look at the stop there and a beautiful slap pass to Santarelli from Henrik Sedin. This one's a dandy. I was cooking. I was looking right over the shoulder and then all of a sudden he did the splits. Look at that. How about the flexibility there of Steve Mason to be able to get the pads out and the glove hand. Sixth season in the NHL for Steve Mason, and yet he's only 25 years of age. Still very much a young goaltender. Seven chances for the Canucks, six for the Flyers. Two of the Flyers, though, gone in the net, only one for the Canucks. Simmons lost the puck. Jack Cassian will move it to center. David Booth, the former Florida Panther. The Canucks still hoping he can rediscover his goal scoring touch. Tied up in the corner. Comes free, the Flyers have it. Simmons in the middle. Now the Flyers will move it ahead. Rumble into the corner, it bounces across ice. Good work by Brayton Shen to come away with that puck. Throws it across for Simmons. Back behind for Raffle. Raffle checked by the Canucks. That was Schroeder who got the puck away from him, and his outlet finds Cassian. Cassian checked by Grossman. Now the shot by Booth. Save made Mason. Bounces out to Brad Richardson around behind the net. Canucks get to it. Cassian all the way across. That shot through traffic. On top of body and wide. Brad Richardson and Reed come together. Reed trying to maneuver it out to center, but it's Grossman instead. And the Canucks you can see the aggressive four checking. You can just try to pin you in your own zone. Reed a shot here. That bounced off of the X and then off of the Wando, and there's a little room between Longo's pad and the post, but he did not sneak through. The Longo not taking anything for granted tonight after that goal that got past him right. a couple of games ago. Yeah, that was the last game. It was, yeah, it was a 1 1 game, and that own goal basically took all the wind out of the sails for the Canucks. As Mason will play that one back behind his net, keep it away from the Canucks four checkers. And the Flyers will move it ahead. Cut it off of the red line, and now Bruce will drop it back. The Flyers are completing a change. His backhand's in. This is the first of seven straight on the road for the Canucks. Seven road games in 11 days. The major challenge for this team, although John Totorella, after the skate this morning, said really looking forward to it. Says the team needs to get to know him better. He needs to get to know the team better. And this is the way you do it on the road. And towards his old team says boo hoo after the way they've had to start the New York Rangers with the road trip that they're on nine road games yeah. to start the regular season. Yeah. That caused, of course, by the transformation that continues in Madison Square Garden. 
That renovation, remember. Correct. And he'll Sedin in. His pass back just out of the reach of Tanev. He'll send a bouncer and save. Made Mason the rebound. Swatted to the boards by Giroux. For a check for Grossman. Up the wall for McGinn. McGinn protects the puck. Tried to send Giroux to center, but it was intercepted by Vancouver. Now it's Coburn backhanding it ahead off of for a check. And he played it with a high stick, so play is whistled down. 11.22 to go in the second. Time again, around the net again. It pays off, and the Flyers have the lead. Two on the Flyers lead the Canucks in the second period. Let's take a look at our Geico quote of tonight's game. Eric Gustafson on having the success despite his size. Well, faster decision making is a huge part of it. Also positioning, maybe still a little closer, but I try to read the play and be there when the puck arrives. Don't give that forward time to protect it or put it away. There is the breakdown. 5'10, 193 pounds for. Eric Gustafson. Mobility helps as well, doesn't it? It does, and he's stocky, too. He's not a little guy as far as the weight goes at 193. He's well built and he's strong on the puck, and that, I think, helps him, as you can see him here, trying to get that puck out. Yeah, really, you think about a lot of guys 5'10 or more in the 180 range. Right. So, 193, he does have some muscle to him. The Canucks moving up here. That shot by Kessler went wide. Stanton giving a bump by Simmons, but keeps the puck in. Hanson and Stanton come together. The puck bounces free, and here's an outlet for Simmons. He's got help coming. Simmons up the right wing, holds, fires, and it's deflected by Garrison out of play. Good job by Garrison there, Coatsy, the way he played that. Simmons elect to sh electing to shoot the puck, and Garrison was able to get a stick on it. Boy, you'd love to have Simmons have eyes in the back of his head because he's got people with him. Garrison's playing it one-on-one, -on -one. gets a stick right there, forces Simmons as a right-hand shot to take that puck and let it go, but he had people, especially team and right in the slot. Would have been a tough pass, but still, Simmons did the right thing by shooting it. Wayne Simmons, as you may have heard in our open, got to shoot the puck. Want to shoot the puck right. to be successful, and that might have been on his mind on that break there. Here's Matt Reed. Reed takes a look. He'll wind up and fire in the save made by Luongo. Henrik Sedin to it, will drop it back to Hanus. Now back to Henrik. Satterelli checked, but maneuvered it to Henrik Sedin, and he'll pop it into the Philadelphia zone. Coburn is back to retrieve. Henrik Sedin gets to him. Coburn drives the other side of the ice. Tanev is there. Back down low. This is where Henrik is so dangerous. Down the other side. Gets to Daniel, and now out to Tanev. Across to Hanus. His shot deflected, but went wide. And now Grossman took down Santarelli as he was battling for the puck. They let that one go. And Couturier back deep, got that puck free. Flyers move up. Here's a pass for Reed with a step, but the puck will bounce into the corner instead. Oh, and Reed takes a shoulder from Hamus. Couturier over after he topples to the ice. The puck is underneath him. He still has it under one of his skates. Gets back up now. Reed hoping that puck will come free. It does. Matt Reed. Down by Tanner. Who will get control of the puck? Each of the scrum here. Finally, it's the Canucks. And Daniel Savini. Moves it to Hendrick. And he'll bank it in. For how many times they pass to one another in the it's course amazing. of the game. Just a little pass in the defensive zone was a good little play by Daniel to Hendrick, and they're able to exit the zone. With Shen playing it back to Mason on purpose, I think, and then Adam Hall for Ronaldo, but he could not come up with it. Now a turnover, but they're going to say the play is offside at the Vancouver line. Still two on flyers. We pass the midpoint of regulation time. 2-1 Philadelphia over the Vancouver Canucks right now as we're just past the midway point of the second period. Our Wells Fargo great check of the game. I uh, wonder who this is. Yeah, that's right. That's Ronaldo. And he absolutely drills Jason Garrison. And it was a real nice check because Garrison tried to get in between Ronaldo and the boards. And as a result, another Wells Fargo great check for Zach Ronaldo. I think we got to start keeping track of how many he's got. I should point out, by the way, that that gentleman standing in front of, uh, that was Mr. Dvorsky, was it not? Yes, Coach, it is, and I had, I had an opportunity to talk to him. He's feeling a little bit better, and he's back 
Doing his, uh, good job as a linesman. Well, the physical therapist might have helped him out down there. Get the pink out of the neck, and he's ready to go. Boy, I tell you what, Brad Smith got a hold of him. He doesn't yeah. even feel his neck right now. <laughs> Been there, done that. Oh, I was crying. <laughs> there are the Canucks putting some pressure on. Hansen is shot high and wide off the glass. And now Voracek, long lead, hoping for McGinn out of his reach. He has the stick knocked out of his hand, but no ball, no ice either because McGinn got to the circle and got to the faceoff dot, I should say, first. And he has his stick back as he went to the bench. Talbot has replaced him. His stick is still out on the ice. There's a different stick. There is a stick like behind Luongo. Good hit there by Talbot. And he comes away with the puck as well. He's hooked. Penalty upcoming. Delayed call. Here's Talbot holding on. Sent it through the slot. Nobody able to tip that puck. Couturier does get it back to Coburn, but he turned it over to Kessler. And there's your whistle stopping play. But the Flyers will get their first power play of the game. And you can reserve a suite for an October or November game and choose a free suite to next Saturday's college hockey face-off, the return of Disney on ice this holiday season, or from one of two phantom games this February. Act now and enjoy the game from the comfort of your very own suite. Chris Higgins will go to the box. All right there, you get to see. He's got, he's got the stick and tell, but right up underneath, and the speed aren't moving. We just keep telling you, if your feet aren't moving, and the speed are moving, he might not get that call, but he got the stick definitely up underneath the arm of Talbot. So the Flyers, power play gets its first opportunity past the midpoint of regulation time in this game. Just one power play for each club thus far. And, uh, obviously the Flyers able to kill off the Canucks man advantage. The Flyers can do with theirs. Kimberly Boyle hoping they can Put $400 in her pocket. Donald's power play payoff. Team and it sends that one in. Strange hop. Simmons is swinging a miss at the bouncing puck. Luongo nearly had that one bounce off of him. He had to be experiencing some deja vu right there. Yeah, when, and when you see it happen at the other end, when Mason had the first goal for Vancouver go in off a bad bounce on the stanchion, you're like much more alert. And Luongo was very patient and waiting and not jumping out of the net. And also, yeah, what happened to him last game, he's probably a little leery of anything from behind <laughs> at this point. Already, almost a minute gone by in the power play, and Stephen cannot keep that one in the zone. You had a look at the numbers, Flyers 7.4%. Over the last 15 with a man advantage. Canucks a good penalty killing team, third best in the NHL. With the largest two power play goals against in 21 man down situations. That play, they say, is onside. Here's Reed. Reed checked by Bieksa. Bieksa comes away with a puck. Has the other corner set up the wall, kept in by Strike. Couture knocks it down. Cross. Get it organized. Got to see the Strike for a shot blocked in front. Couture tried to poke that through. And again, it didn't get there, but they keep it in again. Gustafson shot blocked. He gets it back. Across to Strike. Pressure on the points from the Canucks. Couturier forced that one off the shin pad. Garrison knocks it down to Bieksa, and he will have time now. To clear all the way down the ice. And that will do it for the power play. Flyers now hold for the last 16 on the man advantage. Manev, that one to setter. Hall knocks it down back to Coburn. Braden Coburn in the middle. Tipped by Talbot. Hall set it off the side and that out in front. But the Canucks all over that. And they'll move back. Chris Higgins from the red line, chipping it in. He and Coburn chase. Coburn in his 500th National Hockey League game of the night. That's the puck to Talbot, but he turns it over. Weber, pass knocked down by Grossman. He'll try to clear. Knocked down by Higgins. Higgins will spin the puck back down low for Cassian. Knocked up by Coburn. Cassian centering pass. The shot blocked by Grossman. One of the shot block leaders in the NHL. He just calmly knocked that one down. Flyers got it out the center. Drilled right back in. And he'll sit behind the cage. Adam Hall. Had to flip that ahead, but Albert was well covered. Flyers have to start again behind their net. And he banked that one all the way down. Everybody going to the bench for the Canucks. So it's Albert, the first one there. Longo comes out to play this puck. Tito turned it over to Luke Shen. Nice 
center to get his check. Less than four and a half remaining in this second period. Quickly moving game. Two on flyers. Not a lot of shots here of late. There's 27 total shots in the game. A lot of passing, a lot of perimeter passing, though. Not a lot of jam plays towards the net. And both teams have been settling through the neutral zone. Giroux tips that end to begin. Now Voracek across for Giroux is tipped on the way there. Giroux will keep it alive to begin. Around behind for Voracek. Voracek uses his body to protect the puck. Knocked down by Garrison. Again came in to give some support but couldn't come up with the puck. And the Canucks have it moving the other way. Bieksa on the left wing to Hendrick. Back for Bieksa out of his reach. Daniel will get to it. Bieksa down below the goal line. Run it back for Daniel. Daniel just ran some interference for a teammate on the far side. The Flyers though get to the puck and it does make its way to the neutral zone. Santarelli has it there. They'll just dump it into the Philadelphia zone as both teams will change up. Luke Shen back for Philadelphia. Simmons. And now out to the neutral zone off the stick of Braden Shen, but played right back in. Flyers having some difficulty getting through the neutral zone here. Shen rides Higgins in. Canucks are there. Hansen back out. Amus across. And have a shot deflected, never got to the net. Kessler does get to the puck. It's tipped away from him. Simmons will punch it past. And you said get to it. Three on two for the Flyers. Bouncing puck. Handling it now. The pass for Simmons and it's tipped away from him. Seems to be bouncing the entire way. Now Kessler gets past Gustafson. Ryan Kessler moving up. Kessler the shot. Save made Mason in the rebound to Gustafson. And he will try to get away from the pressure. Right wing feed. Strike. Just get that puck deep into the Vancouver zone. Timely save there from Mason Kessler at all day to walk in and pick his spot. Mason covered the angles and made a terrific save. Here come the Canucks. Matt Cassie moving well up the left wing. Voracek from behind trying to knock the puck away. Schroeder after it. He's leaned down by Giroux, but the Canucks will play it around to the other side. McGinn chases with Schroeder. They cancel each other. The Flyers are there. Rolling it ahead to Voracek. Moving up with Giroux. There's the pass to the captain. Giroux's shot blocked. Goes behind the net. And the Canucks emerge with it. Yannick Weber on the left wing to Schroeder. Say it's onside. He goes cross ice. Shot! High and wide. Booth missing the target. Now Garrison will set it back in. Luke Shen has it. 142 remaining in this second period. Pass ahead. Katuri has trouble controlling it. He gets it back and he'll flutter it into the Vancouver zone. The exit back. Leaves it in the corner. Reed first to it, but the exit intercepts. It's to Henrik and now Daniel. Daniel Sedin in the neutral zone will wind it deep into the Philadelphia zone. Mason cuts it off. Goes hard around up the other side, but right there is Garrison. Garrison slip shot block. Flyers look to move in transition. Coburn racing up with the puck. The right wing feed could not be handled by Reed. They're saying no icing and. Garrison will get the puck to a teammate and now Hedrick Sedin. Bounces that one to the right of Mason. Daniel after it. Gustafson plays it to the board. The shot, the flick to save Mason. Rebound Santorelli. Backhander was blocked. Flyers trying to clear here. Raffle got it to center ice. And then he kicks it a little further through center. And now he gets the puck back. And he'll carry it in. Raffle cutting to the middle. As a look, spinorama shot and the save made by Luongo. Braden Shen trying to work away from Tana. Shen to Simmons. Back to Shen. The shot! Locked in front. Karam bouncing around. Braden Shen knocks it down, puts it down, tries to play with his stick. But the Canucks have it. 27 seconds remaining in the period as Tana plays it in. Heck of a hockey game, isn't it? The puck just keeps firing around the boards, and everyone's got the jump in their legs from both clubs. Flyers contend here to slow things down before this period ends. And an outstanding period for Philadelphia. Takes the lead at the end of this. Harrison up the wall. There's Higgins. He'll just back end into the Philadelphia zone. Final seconds of this second period. And as Jonesy said, Flyers get themselves the lead. After two periods of play, time again with his second of the hockey game, third in two games. It's a 2 1 hockey game. Well, let's take a look at our Independence Blue Cross fearless play of the game. And it came in the first period as what? Mr. Nick Grossman. Oh, ho, ho. 
Mike Santarelli says, what was that? And take a look at the shoulder. Shoulders down, got into him, didn't keep his feet moving. Nicely done. Tonight's Flyers Canucks second period was brought to you by Kia. To learn more, visit kia.com. And by the Pennsylvania Lottery. Tonight's Mega Million jackpot now has an estimated annuity of $29 million. So play today. Pennsylvania Lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvanians. Players must be 18 years or older. GMC Sierra update coming up. John Boric. Bill Clement analyzing the first two periods from the Wells Fargo Center. Flyers 2, Canucks 1. Penalties in that game as well. Lots of fighting early. Two of the top teams of the early going, going head to head. And looks like a rivalry is start between San Jose and St. Louis. The Sharks haven't just won their first five games. They've dominated their opponents. However, those two goals put the Blues behind in the game for the first time this year. That's right. And going with Yaroslav Halak every game yeah. has Ken Hitchcock. They had not trailed a single second until Logan Couture put wow. that puck in. Right here, it's 2 1 Flyers as the third period is underway. Big game here. Flyers trying to get that second win for the Canucks. It's the start of their season long seven game road trip. So both these teams want this one badly. Hansen leaving the ice surface for the Canucks pretty quickly after he had. And on the ice, I'm not sure if he was shaken up or equipment issue. Battle for the skate problem. Skate problem, there you go. And the Flyers trying to get to the puck now, teaming in. Worked on by Satterelli. Russell is there as well. Up tipped away, and Simmons able to maneuver it to the neutral zone. He is stripped shortly thereafter by Higgins. Flyers, a bit of a Disjointed line change there, but they get away with the puck out into the neutral zone. That's what happens when you turn the puck over before the red line, and Simmons was un unable to get it in. Now Vancouver is able to turn it back. Daniel Sedin with a shot that deflects into the slot. Gobbled up by Couturier. He'll lead the Flyers the other way. John Couturier gains the line, swings wide to the right wing. Centers it in front of a skate, and then Talbot saved Luongo. I think that might have gone off Talbot's skate as well, but Luongo took care of it. Now Daniel Sedin gets the puck in. Boston's been very physical with any player in his vicinity tonight, but you want to be physical with the Sedins, but you have to be careful in doing that because they can obviously make you look foolish too. They can, and they can draw penalties as well. Yeah. And Grossman's done a really good job in that department throughout this game. So, uh, Sedin draw one on him early in the game, but outside of that, Grossman has really done a fine job. Ford Jack trying to get to that puck, couldn't quite corral it. Now Tanev. Out through center, Cassian tipped that. Mason will let that one lift to his left. Chen took care of his man, and now it's begin. He's out let off of Voracek. They're going to wave icing off. Voracek pursues with Hamu. Gets some help from Giroux. Up, up the wall, back out to the point. Luke Shen takes a look, gets some room, and then fires off McGinn to Giroux for the shot. And Tanev got his stick on that, the shot block leader. For the Canucks. Now Giroux is shot. Blocked. It sits in the slot. Or check. And McGinn were there but couldn't find it. And now David Booth moves the other way. And he swarmed upon before he could get to the Philadelphia line. And the Flyers look to rush again as Luke Shen will send it in. Fires will go for a change. Simmons is off the bench and into the play. And Richardson moved that puck through center and all the way down. They say no icing here. Eric Gustafson. Checked by Weiss. Get on teaming it as he plays it the other way to Raffle. Michael Raffle. His first home regular season NHL game. Okay, ahead, Simmons to Shen, and now Raffle. Right back to Shen. He waits and fans. And the puck back toward the line. The exit uh, trying to clear, and now with some help from Luis, he does. Luis, a nice move at the Philadelphia line. The second move, though, shut down by Grossman. Raffle trying to protect the puck from Richardson. It pops free, and Simmons is able to tip it out to the neutral zone. Tornarello doesn't play this line very often. They get about four minutes a game usually, Sestito being part of that line. And Nicholas Grossman in a lot of pain as he headed over to the Flyers bench there. Jimmy McCrossin, the trainer, already there taking a peek at him. That is not good news. He is hunched over at the Philadelphia tunnel, leading to the locker room. Flyers get the puck in. 
Stanton's pass tipped away. Reed steals it. Maneuvering with it to Talbot, but his shot off escape. Which is back toward Talbot, but it's Yannick Hansen instead. Yannick Hansen's a guy who can play on the top line. He can also play in your shutdown line. Very versatile. The through setter, Luke Shen takes over. That pass dangerously into the high slot of his own zone, and now Kessler has it. His angle shot nullified by Coburn, and it skips off the glass out to center ice. Four and a half into this third period, still 2-1 Philadelphia. Mark strike to it, guides it up and out. Flyers still looking for that elusive three-goal game. They might need a third in this one. Yeah, no question, especially if Grossman is going to be unable to come back in this game. He's trying to catch his wind on the bench right now, and he has been a big factor in this game defensively for Philadelphia. Drew backhands that to center. The Nuts re entered the zone, but not before they had gotten out of the zone. And so offside call. There's Jim McCrossin with Nick Grossman. He's obviously still in quite a bit of pain. Yeah, and here's the play, just taking the hit to make the play. Waste with the big hit right there on Grossman. And you can just see he felt a little awkward and a lot of pain as he headed towards the bench. You wonder if that, you see the way his shoulder hit that glass? And the way he's being tended to, Jonesy, you can see a better shot of it than me. Is he being tended to for losing uh, his breath, or his wind, rather, or do you think it's a shoulder? I, I really can't tell. You know, at first glance, I was thinking lower body, so I, I'm not sure. But bouncing out of play, perhaps off of Coburn. You know, Timonen is now in some pain, and... Tim McCrossin now goes to work on another of the Flyers' veteran defensemen. Well, later tonight on the Orange Line, Flyers head coach Craig Berube discusses his inspirations and what he wants his team to look like on the ice. And right of more, a new episode of the Orange Line presented by Bradford Whitewater Heaters. Tonight at 11.30 right here on Comcast Sportsnet. And Grossman was shaking his leg out. Yeah, I saw that. So you were correct. There is Reed moving on in. Swings to the left wing. Reed around behind. Up the other side and then drops it off for Braden Shen. Bodies hand together. Up comes free for shot off the post and then into the safety netting. Matt Reed catching iron. As so many of those fire forwards looking for that first goal have had some chances, but just not quite able to bury it. And he's been working his tail off in this game. He got himself in perfect position there. Third man high in case the puck turns over, and the quick release there right off the crossbar. He's looking for that one-timer. Good opportunity here with the Flyers working two on two in the corner. Look at this shot right off the pipe, and you can just see the frustration. See that? His oh, his player Shen just kind of, oh my goodness, I can't believe we didn't get that one. This puck all the way to Mason. He plays it right back up the boards, and that sends Couturier to center. Big powerful strides for Sean Couturier, cuts to the middle, but he was checked. And now Reed will just toss it back around behind the Vancouver net. Couturier gets hit up high. Everything's good according to the guys in striped shirts. Adios to the Philadelphia line, and he'll spin it deep. Oh, that's a good sign. Nick Grossman back out on the ice and throwing his weight around. And he's shot the flex, and there's Katuri to knock it out of arm's way. Up the wall. Talbot trying to clear. And about third try, he does. Moves it to Reed, and Reed will shuttle it in. Didn't take Grossman long to get physical, did it? He went right back to the body, crashing in his defensive zone. It was a good job in helping the Flyers clear. He leaves, and now Kimo Tiemann in his back out. So. Good news for the Flyers, two guys who are in a lot of pain, and they're right back on the ice, although knowing the two players, not surprised. No, and two of the most important guys when you're holding on to a one goal lead. 13-16 to go here in the third. 2-1, the Flyers lead the Vancouver Canucks. Let's take a look at our Hyundai. Save of the game, and it came at the end of the second period. And we just talked, and Sister Jones was talking about Ryan Kessler, what a great player. Well, right there is a perfect example. He comes off the off wing. You figure he's going to go to the outside. No, he tried to go to the close side. Right to the right of Mason. And boy, he came up with an outstanding glove save. Got the glove up right at the last second. That could have been a big goal at that time for the Vancouver Canucks. That is our Hyundai save of the game. Tough game for goaltenders because they're not seeing a lot of shots. But then all of a sudden, they're being tested. Right. 
with a real good chance. Both Mason and Longo have been pretty good in this game. Mason 16 saves on 17 shots, so his save percentage continues to be outstanding this year. And just one Vancouver Canucks shot here in the third period so far. Demon and Kessler battling here. Canucks come away with it. Hendrick Sedin's pass back, tipped out by Voracek. He's racing after it. He'll force Luongo to come out of the net, and he'll give it away to Voracek out in front, and it went off him again in NBX uh, before Hendrick Sedin comes up with the puck. His cross-ice pass is on the money to Higgins. Higgins to the backhand. Higgins around behind the net, pursued by Grossman. Grossman let go just in time, so he didn't get a penalty. Now Hendrick Sedin has the puck. In one of his offices, got it in front and they score. Higgins blasting it past Mason to tie the game at two. Higgins first of the season after a whole bunch of shots. And this game is deadlocked. Well, what a pass by Henrik Sedin. The patience behind the goal and the saucer pass right to the tape in the wheelhouse of Higgins. He's able to get that puck past Mason. It was Higgins that did all the work prior to getting out front there. Then, when you leave a guy like Sedin by yourself, or by himself, look at the time he had. And then you got one, two, three Philadelphia Flyers there, but somehow Higgins gets by himself. He's a left-hand shot. Henrik put it right on there, and this game is tied. And that is so classic, Henrik Sedin, and appropriate that his 800th career point would come on an assist like that. He's only the 10th active player to have 800 points with one team. And once you saw him there unchecked, and I said it's in one of his offices because there's so many different quadrants of the ice where he's effective, but he is just deadly from behind that. He is. Give John Tortorella some credit. He separated the Sedin twins on that last shift and has done so here also with Daniel out without Henrik. Yeah, Kessler out there. Talbot's pass goes off the stick out in front. He had done that in one other game as Couturier tries to get the puck to Reed here. Now it's back to Couturier. Flyers trying to respond. Shen shot high and wide and then catches the safety netting. And now the officials see that and play is stopped. Yeah, this is the second time in a game where Totorella has separated the twins. That was sacrilegious once upon a time. Worked this time. It sure did. And Gretzky in the office there, right? Yeah. Behind the net, a little more space behind there, as to Coatsy talked about, the new streamlined nets. And we've seen a lot of wraparounds and a lot of plays from good offensive players in behind that net in their office. It becomes a little mini two-on-one because you've got Grossman trying to shut it off off the pipe. But the next thing you know, here's Sedin just seeing Higgins right in the right spot. And Grossman can't catch that puck between the two. You think the great one would have done with that little bit of extra room back there. He's scary. Oh. Here's Wayne Simmons, turning with it, drops it off for Tiemann, and the Flyers have to respond here. They have had third period issues over the last two seasons. And it's something Craig Groovy was asked about yesterday at practice, and said, well, it's not like the guys after the second period say, uh-oh, here comes the third period, and try to change anything. But he says he wants to get this team into really, really good shape. They were in good shape, but they're playing now a real puck pursuit system. And one that entails a lot of skating. Not that they weren't before, but even more so now. And he says they're going to have to be in spectacular shape to play well in the third. Yeah, and the practices are real competitive. A lot yes. of drills like this in the corner, trying to battle for loose pucks, moving your legs, and use a lot of energy. And this time again, he has both flyer goals. Is it the Voracek? Voracek wrapped up. Pass to Coburn, backhander. Went off of Weber and wide. Now Grossman a shot gloved by Luongo, and he'll hang right on. Good aggressive work there from the Flyers defenseman. Take advantage of the Flyers all-for-one deal, which includes a ticket to the game, plus all-you-can-eat food and drinks in the Lexus Club starting at just $85. Call now and get this great package. Well, the Canucks find themselves in a tie game. They're tied with the... Montreal Canadiens in the last game when things went awry on Roberto Luongo. And we'll get a look at that here momentarily. And might be on their minds right now. It's second period action against Montreal, but late second period. There's a read for the Flyers, and Talbot. Nick Hansen will send that one the length of the ice. This will be icing. And the strike goes back. So Saturday night, 
Vancouver against Montreal. 1-1 game. Looks like an innocent play here. Roberto Luongo plays the puck to Jason Garrison. He hands off to Dan Hemus and uh-oh. It's in the net. That, that, a lot of things had to go wrong on that play and Roberto Luongo could just shake his head. Dan Hughes not feeling too good about himself and it was a shorthanded goal. Yes. Lars Eller got credit for the goal. He was on the bench by the time the puck was in the net. Did he get a plus? I, you know, I haven't been able to figure that out yet. He wanted to know after the game. So do I get a plus for that? But it completely changed the game. It was a 1-1, highly competitive game at that point. That made it 2-1, and the Canadians took the game over. Canadians, one of the few Eastern teams to beat a Western team in regulation this year. He said he's been heavily... The West superior to the East. Flyers trying to cut into that here tonight, but 28-7 and 3, the record for Western teams against Eastern teams coming into play tonight. It's incredible. And you have to think that home ice has come into play in there. Rangers starting on the road. That was very <laughs> difficult for them. And the Flyers take a big chance there moving it in front of Mason. Not a bad time for a whistle here. Eric Gustafson out in front of the empty net for that maneuver. He got away with it. And here it is. Numerically for you, 28-7 and three. The Flyers will play 28 against the West. This is only their second one. They lost to Phoenix in their first one. The Canucks one and one against the East. They'll play a lot of Eastern teams on this seven-game road trip. But I was talking with and asking several of the players. Nick Grossman, for instance, who's played in both conferences. Why? What difference? And he was at a loss. Out here as Higgins was around the net, but taken away by Gustafson. And time again, backhands it down the ice. And that's going to be icing. I thought Tanev might have gotten a piece of that, but he did not. So the puck all the way down into the Philadelphia zone for a draw. Well, college students and military personnel can get specially priced tickets for Flyers home games. Just show your student or military ID and save at the Wells Fargo Center box office on the day of each Flyers home game. And while you were watching that, Spike Berube has called timeout after another icing, and he's got some tired bodies on the ice. Well, let's take a look at our Toyota turning point. Came here at the third period back at just a short time ago. As Henrik Sedin going to have the opportunity to be able to time, right there, time, set up, and then he'll find Chris Higgins all by himself on the forehand. Higgins ties the hockey game, and Henrik Sedin picks up his 800th point in his career as the Canucks are now tied with the Flyers. 2-2, that's our Toyota turning point of tonight's game. Henrik Sedin, 415 points in the last five seasons. Only Alexander Ovechkin has more. And again, because people in the East don't see the teams in the West, or at least have it in the last three or four years, I doubt many hockey fans east of the Mississippi would have realized that he was that high on that list. Right, but anyone who's playing against him on a regular yeah. basis knows exactly. For sure. Any Western Conference fan knows absolutely. The only reason Daniel's not higher is he missed some time because of injury, whereas Henrik Kessler's shot is denied by Mason. Henrik, as we mentioned earlier, is on a long consecutive game streak. He never seems to miss any time. Look out here. Higgins in. Drops it back. There's Henrik to the point. Shot tennis save. Mason rebound. Talbot couldn't get control of it, and now the Flyers do. And Reed will flutter it out to the neutral zone. And Ox have begun to... Take this game over from a territorial standpoint. Flyers need to spend some time in the offensive zone. 8.42 remaining in the third. Reed from the red line winds it in. Couturier back around behind. The exit. Big sweep at that. Now Grossman a shot. Deflected. Went off the glass and off the back of the net. Bounces free. Couturier first to spot it. Has trouble controlling the bouncing puck. And then took an elbow in the face and a penalty. Elbowing will be the call. And the Flyers will get a power play as Bieksa will head to the box. All right, guys, thank you very much. Kevin Bieksa will sit for two minutes because of this. 
sneaky little elbow here at the end of the play to the head of Sean Couturier. Referee in good position to make the call. So the Flyers get their second power play of the game. Good opportunity to get off of an 0 for 16 shot right here. As the Flyers try to take the lead here in the second half of the third period. Simmons, Giroux, Ray Shen up front, Borchek and teaming in on the points. But the Flyers unable to win that draw and gain control, so they have to start back behind their own net. You see that same thing that Tortorella did in New York where he likes to try to hone you in your, in your corner. In other words, with four guys, hold you in that corner with four guys right in that spot. Shot for a check and the save made by Luongo on screen. So he just accepted that one in his midsection and he'll take the face off. Yeah, good save by Luongo there, but the traffic is the issue. Flyers want to get more bodies in front, try to get some tips and some screens, get in the way of his vision and see if they can't get something past Luongo here on the power play. I meant to say him. That's what I wanted. Hem you in the corner. Hem you in. Hem you in. Right. Flyers want to be unhemmed. I don't think that's a word. They don't want to be hemmed. How's that? Better. Face off to the left of Luongo as Giroux does not beat Henrik Sedin. Canucks have had the better of things on draws in this game. Braden Shen around for Giroux as the Flyers do retrieve the puck. Simmons. Oh, Giroux gets decked. Puck goes back out to teaming it. Looking for shooting lane, couldn't find it. Now he's got it center point, he'll take the shot, deflection, save, rebound! It's loose, and a swat at it by Voracek, but it wound up going back behind the net. Really good setup at the top there, Giroux with a quick pass back to team, and then I think Simmons tipped that shot, and then at the rebound opportunity, Luongo kicked the leg out. Team in to Giroux right back to Kimo, and he'll wind it in. Garrison. Pop off his stick to Kessler. Kessler checked by Shen. Simmons joins in. Flyers might outnumber them. Giroux a take. Now he got away with it. Now Higgins will try the other side, but Voracek is there. Voracek beating Kessler to the boards. Now stops and gets it back. Teaming it with the pass. One timer, Giroux blocked. Danev, another block. Now that puck to Shen across. Nice Voracek the shot, and that one deflected and went wide. They're not blocking shots here. Don Tortorella teams tend to do that. Now the battle. Down to 15 seconds in the power play. Time a wasting as the Flyers having trouble getting that puck out of there. Good hard work though, and they finally do get it out to Borchek with some room. He'll wind a fire blocked by Kessler and out of play it goes. At least three block shots in that sequence. Yeah, and some good work by Shen down low to get it back to the point. They did get bodies in front here for the chemo team and in shot. Attempted redirection by Simmons and the rebound chance Luongo was able to kick that pad out. And you see a couple of opportunities and it looks like there's the Vancouver Canucks one, two, three, four. Everybody's right in front of the goal and you're trying to block those shots as Jimmy had mentioned. But the shots can come once they get way to the side. Somebody's going to be open on the opposite side of the rink. Tightly played game. Both teams well now 10-9 the chances in favor of Vancouver so one team has reached double figures, but here in the third, it's been tough to work through the checking for both of these clubs to get great scoring chances. Off this draw, just a couple seconds on the power play. Flyers have to wait, and the X is out of the box. It's a three on two. Santarelli with the pass. Richardson tries to get it back in front, but it's tipped away. It was actually Richardson. Richardson now for Santarelli. Now the puck back toward Hamus. He'll flip one. Redirected save. Mason off of Santarelli. Santarelli already has two game winners in overtime for the Canucks. He was looking for perhaps a game winner in the third right there. But Mason had his pad ready. Uh, Muck for it. Talbot. Couturier. Couturier centering. Went off of Luongo out in front. Then hops over Grossman stick. They are going to call this icing. And throw the faceoff back into the Vancouver zone. Another important offensive zone faceoff for the Flyers. There's still time to get a great seat at the Flyers as the Flyers take on division rival the Pittsburgh Penguins this Thursday at 7 o'clock. For tickets, call 800 298 4200 or go to PhiladelphiaFlyers.com. They drop the puck to the right of Luongo. Bruno Luongo many people figured he'd still be a Vancouver Canuck. They couldn't trade him. Decided not to buy him out. They traded Schneider instead and now he's their guy again. The 
Couldn't trade him because of his contract. That's right. Too big and too much turn, but he's a heck of a goaltender. He has gone on Twitter and said exactly why he wasn't traded. Yeah. Well, he he's tried pretty to active get it on Twitter, Coach. He's I, pretty entertaining, too, actually. He tried to get his contract redone. Actually, as a new agent, new representation as well. And he got there during this offseason. Played well in this one. He's made 18 saves. Or make that 17 saves. Mason has made 20. Here's Bieksa behind the Philadelphia net. Higgins around behind. Look out. Here's Sedin. Henrik Sedin centered it. No one home this time. Bieksa will keep it in. Bieksa's shot deflected by Simmons goes to the corner. Less than five minutes remaining in regulation. And the Flyers do chip it out through center. Again, a good job there. Simmons and Bieksa after it. Simmons pokes it to the other side of the ice. He fights off Bieksa, turns with it, centers it to Braden Shen, but he could not get control. Shen pushes Bieksa off the puck. Braden Shen takes a look. Out of the back end, turns back to the forehand, centers it, and that's blocked aside in front by Bieksa. The other side, Higgins. Higgins checked by Simmons. And now Raffle will back end one wide. Braden Shen trying to get to it. It's up the wall. Sprite got a piece of it, but Kessler gathers. To Higgins and into the Philadelphia zone. Broder looking for it. It's together with Sprite. Now Reed leans on his man. Luke Shen trying to take Booth off the puck. He does. We go back after it. And now Cassian in there as well with Reed. Less than four minutes to play in the third. This game has moved along quickly. 2 2 the score. Couturier couldn't play. It's not a hand pass. It's Cassian. And now a whistle stops. Play. And now they call the hand pass. I think they got it right eventually. It just took them a while to make the call. Tonight's Flyers Canucks game was brought to you by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. By Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And by Wells Fargo. If you're considering buying your first home, Wells Fargo is with you. Wells Fargo, together we go far. Deuces are wild with 3.45 to play in the third. Goaltenders have not seen a ton of shots on goal. Each has let two get past them. Bieksa will backhand to the corner. Gustafson turned it over. Daniel should be looking for Hanson. It'll roll all the way out to Bieksa. He lets it go. Then Santarelli didn't get much on his shot. The time again jumps on the puck. His pass across. Warcheck will play it off the board. Warcheck turning with it. And then turns the puck down into the corner. McGinn after it. Tipped it free. Myers will track it down. Giroud to Grossman. A quick shot blocked off by the Canucks. And now Daniel looking to move up. Good not as Santarelli was buried in center ice by Coburn. The exit goes across. Three minutes to play in the third. And that tipped in by Santarelli. Grossman goes back to get it. Both teams finishing changes. Canucks not had a lot of success against the Flyers over the year. In fact, Flyers 15-5-1 in their last 21 games against this club have been extremely successful, especially in Vancouver. There's Higgins with a shot. Shoulder save. Mason rebound around behind. Higgins turned it back out in front. And now it's Hamuse getting it down low. Sadine to Higgins. Shot. Mason, you take. Rebound. They score. In the slot, they're able to ram it home on the rebound, and the Canucks take a 3-2 lead. Higgins, who's been like a man possessed in scoring his first of the year, was involved, and the Canucks have the lead with 2.25 to play. Yeah, that new look line for John Tortorella comes up with the plays. It was started with the wraparound attempt, and everything broke down from there. Higgins with the chance, and Kessler there for the rebound opportunity. East-West, everything's going east-west. This was Higgins that got that puck right across. The rebound comes right over to Kessler. He can only go so fast from post to post, and right there he ran out of room, that being Mason. Well, Kessler has two. No one talking about how important he is to the Vancouver cause. And Totorella is saying maybe the people covering the club have been tougher on him than he deserves early in the season because the numbers weren't very impressive, but he was playing okay. Well, now the numbers looking a little better. He suddenly has three goals on the year. For the Flyers, their third period struggles continue, and they are now behind for the first time in this game. They have to come back. Here is Simmons holding, waiting, firing. Save Luongo. He pins it against his chest, and play is stopped. 
Flyers manage to get that puck to the net on Luongo with some bodies in front and a couple of scrums taking place as Cassian's been involved. Ryan Kessler picks up the goal after doing a nice job in battling in front of the net with Colburn and Grossman. And he manages to find that bouncing puck there and bat it into the net. Mason had made a great save just before that. And those are the kind of goals that Craig Berube wants the Flyers to score. They're not going to always be pretty. He batted that sort of out of the air. He just got in a tough area. Got it in. And, and the wraparound attempts by Vancouver in this game have led to opportunities. Higgins started that whole sequence by just trying the jam play when he got a step in behind the Flyers' net. Flyers have a minute and 53 seconds remaining to try to tie it back up. Coburn looking for Voracek. He is grabbed behind the net. And he ends up taking the exit on as they got all tangled up. And Canucks will move it back through center. It's actually Hamus behind the net all tangled up with Voracek. Now time again. Will flutter it in and get to it and then try to set her, but that won't make it through. He then ends up. Backside in the corner. Empty net for the Flyers. Extra attacker out. 120. In regulation, strike. Sizing things up and now starts up. On the red line, he'll wind it in. Flyers now have to surge to the puck. Hamus chipped it. Shen will find it. Gets to Simmons. Out to strike. He'll wind it. Fire! And then blocked in front. Kessler to it. Tips it free. Higgins stop before he can get to the red line. Now Gustafson back the other way. Eric Gustafson carries it in. Backhand. Save Luongo. Puck still in play. Gustafson keeping it alive. And now Shen to the corner. Try to dig for it. 48 seconds. In the third period clock. Simmons and Shen doing the work along the wall, but they can't come away with the puck. And Giroux got in there, but a little too late. Now Voracek could not keep it in. It rolls on out to the neutral zone. Team and has it. And he'll send it right back in. Flyers need to get in after it, though, as it rolls along. It is teaming in there, firing it across ice. That'll skip up the wall. Gustafson racing over, trying to keep it in, but could not. And now Daniel sitting to the puck. He'll fire it all the way down and miss the net, but he largely got to the red line, evidently. Yep, right in front of me. And so, no icing. Voracek, 10 seconds. In across the line to Couturier. The shot! St. Luongo, rebound, Couturier, side of the net, centers it in front! Giroux couldn't get a stick on it. Loose puck, Gustafson has it tipped away, and that will do it. The frustration continues for the Flyers as the Canucks score late in the third. And hang on for the 3-2 victory. The Flyers drop to 1-6 and six on the season with their third straight loss. Luongo not tested enough, especially in the third period. The Flyers sat back, tried to win it 2-1, and the Vancouver Canucks find a way to manufacture a couple of goals after John Tortorella changed up the lines. Kessler and Higgins went to work with Henrik Sedin and had a heck of a third period. And our Mazda top shelf performers, obviously Ryan Kessler. We'll be on that list as he scores two goals for the Canucks, including the game winner. He now has five and six games against the Flyers. Hendrick Sedin over 800 points. Chris Higgins got his first goal of the season. It tied the game. As the Flyers had their stars as well time again with two goals in the game. But the Flyers have now been outscored 10-2 to two in the third period this year. Well, let's take a look at our Bud Light player of the game, and it comes from the Vancouver Canucks. So this one... I'd like to be able to score about 20 like that. Here's Ryan Kessler catches Mason out of the net because he's got a bad bounce. But this is the one that wins the hockey game. Higgins with the shot. The rebound comes right back to Kessler. He's standing there off the pipe. And that is the winning goal. So Kessler with two goals to lead the Vancouver Canucks tonight over the Philadelphia Flyers. And he is our Bud Light player of the game. Kessler played outstanding in this one, and the Vancouver Canucks take full advantage of the opportunities they're given in the third. So the Canucks climb back over 500 for the season. They begin their seven-game road trip with a victory. The Flyers continue to look for that offense, and they will hope to find some on Thursday night as the Pittsburgh Penguins come to town. This one was a tough one. Tough to find a lot of room out there, but the Canucks found enough to get the victory. For the entire crew, as well as my partner, Steve Coates and Keith Jones, I'm Jim Jackson. Good night. The Wells Fargo Center. Stay tuned now for Flyers Post Game Live, presented by McDonald's.